Hello, my name is Evan Lewis, and welcome back to Cincinnati Museum Center's Story Tree Time. This week, in honor of Black History Month, we're reading a song for Gwendolyn Brooks, which is about Gwendolyn Brooks, the first black writer to win a Pulitzer Prize. Let's read it. A Song for Gwendolyn Brooks by Alice Faye Duncan, illustrated by Zia Gordon. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Sing it loud, a Chicago blues. Skip to the beat of elevated trains. They grumble, rumble, and roll real fast. The year is 1925. Gwendolyn Brooks is eight years old. Gray bursts of smoke hide the yellow sun. Can flowers grow without sunlight? Gwendolyn leans on the front yard gate. Gwendolyn is unsure. 2. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. She greets each day in her velvet glory. Her head is filled with snappy rhymes. She writes her poems in dime store journals. Gwendolyn stands outside the fray. Her classmates cuss. They swish and sass. The busy clock. Clock, clock, tell the time. Tell the time to me. Magic, patient instrument that is never free. Tick, tock, busy clock, you've no time to play. Bustling men and women need you all the day. 1928. They joke and jive, they laugh real loud, they boast and bully, they signify. Girls jump rope on cracked sidewalks, boys play baseball in the streets. Poets own a watchful eye, Gwendolyn stands alone. 3. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Her father is a janitor. He buys the food and pays the rent. Mothering is her mama's job. She cooks the food and scrubs the clothes. Baby brother is Gwen's best friend. They play checkers on rainy days. When the sky is blue, Gwendolyn sits with her tattered notebooks. From the top step of her backyard porch, she watches and listens to the south side neighbors. Women talk about men. Men talk about sports. Children call Gwen. Old stuck-up heifer. 4. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Her mother believes. Her father believes. But sometimes, Gwendolyn doubts her radiance. When jarring, crashing, discordant words splotch and splatter her notebook paper. And when right words don't crystallize, Gwendolyn grabs her mother's garden trowel. She digs beneath the snowball bush and buries her poems in a backyard grave. 5. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. She is a student at Forestville School. Miss Schoolteacher sends a letter home. It reads, Gwendolyn is a cheat. She plagiarized. Gwendolyn is a cheat? This is not so. Mama grabs her hat, black purse, and gloves. She marches Gwendolyn to the school. Mrs. Brooks defends her precocious child. She says, Miss Schoolteacher, I must protest. Gwendolyn does not need to cheat. She writes and speaks with the finest ease. Test her now, and we will see. Gwendolyn considers the insulting charge. She writes a poem in proud, prim letters. Forgive and forget. If others neglect you, forget. Do not sigh. For, after all, they'll select you in times by and by. If their taunts cut and hurt you, they are sure to regret. And if in time they desert you, forgive and forget. 1928. Miss Schoolteacher must drop her charge. Gwen steps high on her walk home. Gwen smiles brightly. Gwen believes. And as the sun breaks through gray clouds of smoke, sunlight shines on Gwendolyn's face. 6. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Chicago teams with black sharecroppers from Dixie Towns. While jobs are scarce in the Great Depression, migrants slog and scrounge for decent work. Gwen is sweet 16 and 33. She has feathery voice and flickering flame. She gushes and giggles over Shakespeare sonnets. Her parents are wise and see her light. They do not yell, go mop the floor. And when high school chums must look for work, Gwendolyn is free to sit and think. Ambition. It hurts a lot to see the top and know you're at the base, to know some power holds you back and yet see glory's face. But all true climbers know that they must rise by base degree, and so they keep on climbing till they find that they are free. 1930 through 1933. She learns to labor for the love of words. Draft one is shoddy. Draft two is a thud. Gwen toils to write one poem each day. She deletes, rewrites, and starts again. The simplest verse is a taxing struggle. Draft three is better. 
draft four is best. Her couplets waltz with wonderment. Gwen's confidence is a bud in spring. Revised, revisions make poetry ring. The Chicago Defender welcomes Gwen. Adults read her rhymes in the poetry section. Mr. Brooks proclaims to Mrs. Brooks, This girl we got is a gifted child. And one special day, Mrs. Brooks declares, she will be a poet like Paul Dunbar. 7. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Chicago, jazz, bebop, hey. In a south side center where children play and borrow books, Gwen makes friends with Henry Blakely and ten black poets. They analyze sonnets with a scrupulous ear. Under Inez Stark, their demanding teacher, they ponder Eliot, Stein, and Pound. Gwen savors her study of the modernist poets. After scribble, scratch, and sundry rewrites, alliterations leap from Gwendolyn's page. Her words are psalms from a south side street. They are polished and poised like English silver. Gwen enters her poems in magazine contests. Again and again, she wins first place. The Children of the Poor, Sonnet Number 2 What shall I give my children, who are poor, who are adjudged at the least wise of the land, who are my sweet lepers, who demand no velvet and no velvety velour, but who have begged me for a brisk contour, crying that they are quasi-contraband, because unfinished, graven by a hand, less than angelic, admirable, or sure. My hand is stuffed with mode, design, device, but I lack access to my proper stone, and plentitude of plan shall not suffice, nor grief nor love shall be enough alone, to ratify my little halves who bear across an autumn freezing everywhere. 1949. 8. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. Time rocks and rolls at a steady pitch. Gwen graduates college. Gwen marries Henry. Gwen mothers and poets in 1950. Henry works full-time in a shirt and tie. He earns the bread for his wife and son. And on East 63rd at Champlain, the family rents two rooms in a kitchenette building. Gwen's south side view is an urban suite. Pointed church steeples pierce the clouds. Pool room chaps skip school and smoke. Four and five families live in one house. Men walk and run. Women sing and shout. 63rd Street is a brown-faced muse. Gwen types her poems in a crowded corner. Click-clack, click-clack. She types. She deletes to type again. Click-clack, click-clack. Readers crowd bookstores. They buy Gwen's book, and she signs her name in fancy script. 9. Sing a song for Gwendolyn Brooks. She whittles her sonnets with perfect grace like Edna St. Vincent Millay and Robert Frost. With slinky sly and sea line spunk, Gwen swings the blues with her black pen, like guitar players at Teresa's lounge. Gwen paints poems with paintbrush words, and Gwen takes home a Pulitzer Prize. A Pulitzer Prize? A Pulitzer Prize. Henry celebrates Gwen, Junior too. They shower her with noisy kisses. Gwendolyn's parents cry tears of joy. They saw her shine. They saw it first. Mr. Brooks and Mrs. Brooks planted love and watered it. Gwendolyn believed. She found her light. And a furious flower grew. The end. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, tune in every week on the Cincinnati Museum Center Facebook and Instagram pages, and there should be another one just waiting for you. And until then, I'll see you then.